Today, we make pasta. Now, I'm not talking this kind of pasta. Get out of here. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm talking from scratch. Homemade, fresh, and old school. You could say it's simply an offer. You just can't refuse. Your dinner guests, they're going to love you for this one. No special tools needed. Just to bring out the big guns. A little elbow grease and a rolling pin, and that's all you need. Now, I've gotten a ton of requests for this recipe, especially from Trinidad and Tobago. So I guess it's safe to say that there are a lot of pasta lovers in TNT. You've asked for it, so here it is. Pasta. Let's do this. First step, let's measure our flour. I like using a fork to fluff mine up a bit before measuring because it does two things. It helps aerate my flour and it gives me a more accurate measurement. If I were to just scoop flour directly out of the bag with my cup, chances are it would be tightly packed and dense. And that's going to affect my dough results, especially when it comes to moisture. Now this recipe calls for three cups of flour and we just want to reserve a little bit off to the side for later. This step is what I like to call the volcano. So pile your flour onto your work surface and then hollow out the center. Add your cracked eggs directly to the middle. And there you have it. We've created something that sort of looks like a volcano. Now, quick tip. Just be sure to make your volcano walls supportive. So make them a little bit thick on the sides and give it a little bit of height. That way it'll better support those eggs. Now whisk away and as you're whisking, you want to add flour in a bit at a time. So you can pick the flour up with your fork, just as I'm doing here, or you can just swoop some in gently with your hands. Now be sure not to destroy the walls of your volcano because I think you know what's gonna happen. Now eventually it's gonna kinda look like a paste. Just keep adding flour to it and then it's going to be safe enough for you to go in with your hands and sort of bring it together to form a mass. Now this is where I think the dough gets a little bit confused. It doesn't know if it wants to be wet and it doesn't know if it wants to be dry. I say this because it is so wet in some spots it's sticking everywhere and then there's dry floury bits. But don't worry, I use the squeezing technique which is pretty much using my hands and squeezing everything together to combine wet and dry. And then we're pretty much on to our kneading stage. Now this is where the kneading process begins. So bring out those big guns. Elbow grease, here we come. So I like to use the heel of my palm and just stretch and pull that dough out and bring it back. Stretch and pull and bring it back. And what we're doing by kneading the dough is pretty much activating that gluten. That's why the kneading stage is very, very important. If you're curious about gluten and wondering why is gluten development so important in achieving great pasta? Well, head on over to the website, ameliadoesdinner.com and take a read. What I like to do at this stage is pretty much follow the circumference of my dough and just lift the edges and bring it back. It doesn't have to go all the way back to the center, but this is gonna do the job pretty well. If after kneading for three minutes, you're still seeing dry bits, or when you flex your dough like this and it is cracking in spots, well, it's time for you to add some water. Now you really have to do this sparingly. I like to dip my fingertips into the water and just add it that way. And you want to make sure that your liquid is incorporated before you add further amounts of water. Your dough should be firm, but it should not feel moist to the touch, nor should it be sticky. If your dough is sticking to the countertop, what you really have to do at that point is add some flour. So when you flex your dough and it doesn't break, you know that you're doing a good job. Now at this stage, your dough is nearly done. It's kind of just gonna glide on the countertop. 
it's going to be taunt and firm and the surface is going to be very very smooth so I just like to add a little bit of pressure and turn it at an angle and keep going and then we're going to be left with something that looks like this that's our pasta dough ball we've just created it now it's time for it to rest but before we do that we have to cover it in some cling film because we don't want it to dry out so we're going to allow this to rest for 30 minutes it is time to roll out our dough what you want to do is portion it out so cut it either in half or into quarter portions totally up to you but cover the portions not currently in use sprinkle some flour and it's time to get that rolling pin going the rest is really easy just roll out the dough by applying even pressure throughout As you roll out your dough, keep sprinkling flour on the surface and on your counter and flip the dough as you go along. This might look thin, but I assure you this is not where we need to be. You have to get your sheet really, really thin, so keep on going. When your dough sheet is semi-transparent, meaning you can see your hand through it, then it's thin enough. Now it's time for us to cut. So flour the surface and fold the dough just as you see me doing here. Add some flour between the layers and get a sharp knife ready to go. Now be sure to sprinkle some flour on a tray and reserve. This is where we're going to put our cut pasta. Just look at how great these look. This type of pasta is called tagliatelle. Now you just want to remember to sprinkle some more flour on it to prevent sticking. And then you can just arrange your portions on your tray. You can cut your noodles thin, as thin as angel hair pasta if you want. Or you can cut it thick like pappardelle. It's totally up to you. Now you see how easy it was to make fresh homemade pasta all from scratch. Just so you know, by the way, not all Italians come from Jersey or New York. Some actually come from Italy. So now that you know how to make fresh pasta, get out of here. But don't forget about it. Ciao.